I think when you're assessing the health of America's democracy, one of the big things you have to look at is democratic institutions. So I think that American democracy is thriving because when you look at institutions and values like free speech and freedom of petition, right now people are very active in making their voices heard. And there have been a lot of protests and some of them have not been peaceful, which I think is a threat, but also the fact that people in my generation are willing to use their voices and are truly professing American ideals and democratic ideals. You know, I think if you get on social media right now and you look at what a lot of the American public has to say about politics in America right now, it might seem like they would say that the um, American democracy is kind of falling down and everyone's kind of disappointed with what's going on. But honestly, I think that's a great sign of the health of a democracy. I think people aren't afraid to use their right to speech, or their, yeah, their right for speech and to say what they believe. So I think that America's democracy is actually kind of healthy right now, even if people aren't necessarily satisfied with what's going on, they're not afraid to, um, to express their opinions. I think one of the biggest ways to assess the health of America's democracy is through voter interaction. Um, by, I think through social media and what we saw in this last election was so many people were a lot more engaged through um, Facebook and other social media because that's how many people got their news nowadays. And when you have this huge access to news, I think that really helps the engagement of people in society with our government and our policy. What gives me hope is my generation. I think young people are a great underutilized asset. And honestly, when you look on the media, it looks like a lot of the things young people are doing in the community right now isn't necessarily great. But I look around and I see all the amazing things that people my age are doing, and I'm so inspired by my generation. So I think we have a great ability to really lift things up and change things. I do have hope in the future that, you know, the president's really going to help unite the country together through um, his policy and through um, interactions on social media. He's been very big on that and over, and I think that's really going to help bring this country back together. What gives me hope in America right now is that I think that the younger generation is very focused on democratic ideals. We're very into justice and equality, and we have a really big crusade to go and to free the minorities and to fight for equality in every single area and gender and sex and just all of those things. And um, I think also something that gives me hope is that in this administration, we actually are seeing politicians cross party lines. And I think that in like a period of so much polarization, this is really important because we haven't been seeing a lot of that. So whether or not it ends up being successful, we'll have to wait and see. But I think that it's definitely a good sign. I do think one of the major problems with the democracy right now is that in this election, you know, people, we had two very different candidates, one with no government experience and one who lived her life with government experience. And this is one of the very few times where the, the president did not win the popular vote. And I think people were so angry by that and so frustrated that even to this day, they're not standing behind the president and our government. And I think that's hurting democracy. I think that one of the biggest threats to American democracy is social media, because although it is a great tool in informing citizens, a lot of citizens are not getting their news from reliable sources. So I think that we are one of the most informed generations, but we're also informed with the wrong news. And if you don't have the right facts, then you can't form an accurate opinion. And that leads to a lot of division and an increased polarization. Well, primarily looking at it, I think, um, honestly, the threat of being in this nuclear tension that we're in right now is definitely scary. But I think as an American crisis, the polarization that we have going on in our political party system is concerning just because if our leaders can't compromise, it's really hard to expect the American public to treat each other with respect and to, to reach conclusions where they can agree with each other and kind of work with diplomacy on anything. So I think that the, the polarization of the parties is definitely concerning.